Yeah, so I have been working on group approval rules for quite some time and um, kind of working off, um, yeah, off, there, there was an older epic that was there that had some, some work done to it a few years ago and I kind of just picked off where that had left off, um, picked up where that had left off and kind of tried to implement it in, in the back end, at least in the sort of the fashion that or in the architecture that it sort of existed already in relation to project rules and merge request rules and how they were implemented. So I built out, you know, a group approval model and some services for that and some API endpoints for handling that. And I was kind of pushing the big questions down the road, which was probably a really bad idea. Uh, and the big one being how would we manage the inheritance between all of these things as a as as you know, because it's I knew that there was a lot of like non not ideal or not standard ways of doing things that were in there already. But anyway, Joe and I had a look at that last week because it was coming to the point where I needed to implement that. And we ran into quite a number of issues, which Carrie, you had run into before. Um, <clears throat> so we had checked out your uh, issue where you broke down a few possible solutions to that. One of which was delegating um, attributes from the project level down to the MR level, or perhaps propagating changes at the project level onto the merge request level. Or I think Patrick, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Bahio, is that his surname, um, had suggested uh, re-architecting the rules in rather a, uh, a kind of complete re-architecture of the system. So after looking at that, it seemed pretty apparent to us that you know, to, if we were to continue implementing group approval rules in the way that I had envisaged, which was kind of light touch and kind of mimicking what was there already, we were going to just create a more mess, which would be harder to unroll. Um, so it was certainly the time to sit, take a step back and look at the re-architecture option, which is what this call is about. I'm um, sorry if there was no need to do that, but I thought I'd set the stage. <laughs> so anybody, any questions on that at the moment? Um, so where do we go from here? So there's, I think, Carrie, you've done quite a bit of work on that, um, on that suggestion that Patrick had come up with of the re-architecture style, which was new tables. Now, I don't know how much technical detail we want to go into in this call, but I guess the question is, is that still a valid option for us or is that something we should pursue? I've kind of spent the day looking at it and looking at maybe perhaps if we could implement that at a group level as well, if it would support a group level structure that we needed to. And I found like maybe a few things we'd need to think about a little bit harder. Um, so my suggestion would be to kind of create an epic for that and do a kind of thorough investigation with all of the different, you know, merge request options that currently exist and see if it supports literally every single one of them. Um, and, and that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. So, and then I guess from a product point of view, uh, I'm kind of wondering, is this something we need to pursue at all? You know, is group level rules a priority for us? Um, and if it is, you know, do we have the capacity to work on the re-architecture? And then from a front end point of view, I guess, you know, I would hope, and I could be wrong about this, maybe Joe, you might, you know, be able to speak to it as well, is that when this is all complete, the front end as it stands shouldn't really, we should try, like this, we should just update the services effectively. So the endpoint should function as is. That would be my expectation. I don't know if that's correct. From what I've seen, I think that should be possible, yeah. Because essentially we're not changing the data we expose, right? We're just cha changing the underlying architecture so that we don't have to you know, have background jobs syncing stuff or delegation or anything like that. We can just have a single source of truth and then use joins to join it to where it should be joined essentially. Yeah, and I think if you're if we're if we're going to do any kind of work on this, uh, you know, not just um, let's not create more mess, but uh, now is the best time to now is a great time to actually make a change and to to rearchitect it. And we we've, we've lived with it. Um, and I wrote that proposal. I came up with that like three years ago. Um, so we have a little bit more experience and sort of seeing you know three more three more years of, of watching customers you know interact with the feature. Um, 
and I think it's still valid. Um, and we've seen some of the shortcomings of that approach play out. Um, we worked around them, you know, we have fixes and everything in place, but we also have um, some large amount of concerns around database usage and speed and whatnot. So anything that we can do to kind of like reduce database load is always appreciated. Um, and re-architecting these rule, rules away from, you know, creating hundreds, if not millions of records, you know, all over the place, that, that's always appreciated by them. So I think, I think the timing is good to at least take a look at it. And I really appreciate that y'all are looking at it because like, you know, fresh eyes and, you know, new, a new vision for it and put some energy into it. That's awesome. So in the absence of any other <laughs> sort of, uh, you know, to do's, I guess, maybe what I should do is because I spent a bit of time looking at it today and like on, on the surface, I've, I found a few little things that kind of bother me a little bit <laughs> about how to do this. So there's a few things that we can do with merge requests at the moment. And I'll just give like a, an example of one of the, of the issues I think we may have. So in this new architecture, I, it's probably something I, I need to draw out and kind of explain in that way. But at the moment, you know, there is a, a if you if you don't allow the user to edit project level rules in the merge request, effectively you can create a merge request and then with no rules in it, and then create a project level rule. And then the merger rec request will get updated with a rule. And in our new system, that's going to be hard to achieve, I think, unless I am mistaken. So there's a few things. Yeah, sorry, Carrie, jump in there. Oh, um, well, I don't know that it would because you would still like, you would just trigger something like, like we have today when we create a new rule, right? We like, we say, yeah. okay, now go and create this rule. So rather than creating the rule and like duplicating it a bajillion times or every single open MR, you're just, you're just, you're, you know, just uh, creating an association through a, a throughs table. So, oh, but if you create a project level rule, you do then go and check the projects MRs for to to update their association to the new rule. I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure that's that's what we we do. I have I, my my one percent is, gosh, I haven't worked on that in a year. Maybe maybe we change it. <laughs> no but... no no no, that's fine. I think okay, yeah. maybe I'm misunderstanding the new architecture. Then, so m my understanding was that we would create that association when you're creating the MOR at that at that mm -hmm. time. Uh, so you guys, you're doing, uh, we, you're doing all, I think all, we would. Both, You're going to do both. Yeah. Yeah, you have to you have to do it in both yeah. both cases, right? When, okay. So we open okay. an MR, we just say. What are the applicable rules? Create that association, and then also when a, when a rule is added, go ahead and add it to that association. The extra step that we do now, which this the re-architecture would change, is that if you change a rule, if you change it from you know Gavin and Joe, and you make it Gavin Joe carry, now yeah. you have to go in and find every single instance where that rule is applied to an open MR and change it its record. Yeah, that's cute. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, right. So that's happening. Yeah, well, that solves that problem. And then similarly for group level, that would that would work as well. Gary, is this similar to what we do with um, custom emojis, where we do lookups on like upper domains, and it basically cascades all the way down from higher level groups, intermediate groups, down to projects? I think so. I'm so not really sure how what, we want to. So I'll explain what what Phil did there. Like, so when you're displaying the the custom emoji or, or whatever it is. Um, what is the other thing he's working on? Common templates. When you're displaying it to the users, or in this case, when you're like checking merge checks, I don't know, um, you basically do a finder. You run a finder just on the upper context and then just gather everything together and then merge them all in and just display them to the user or whatever. That's what I'm guessing would happen here or something similar. Yeah, I'll defer to Gavin and Joe on that um, as far as like, that, sure. That's the idea, right? That we would look to finding an applicable rule at the, the group level first and then cascade it down to projects. So essentially you won't have all roles displayed in the MR. They won't be just um, the MR rules. We won't have a copy on the database. You will inherit the ones that are in the project level ones. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. That makes sense in my head. Thanks. My other question, yeah. if I may, is uh, Carrie, with the recent work with uh, merge checks and auto merge, um, uh -huh. will this re-architecture make it 
not have an impact, make it easier or make it harder? Um, I don't think it would have an impact per se, because basically what we're doing is like now, instead of like, say uh, you have an MR, Andre, and it has eight approval rules, regardless of where they come from. Right now, there are eight individual records that detail that those rules. Um, the re-architecture that we've proposed is that instead of doing that, um, we're simply pointing uh, we're making an uh, association between the merge request and the specific identifier of the of those those rules. So the rules sit in a separate database table. There's only eight rows, and then we just have a bunch of rows that just point, you know, create that relationship. On those rows, then we can create other things that describe uh, qualities of that relationship, like it's been approved or is approved at such such a time or or whatnot. Um, and it just makes for like, it's a much slimmer. We have the same number of rows in that association, but it makes for a much slimmer table, which is faster and happier for the database team. And it's easier for us to make updates as well. So I don't think that anything changes in terms of the checks and the auto merge and whatnot, because it's on the back end. It's still just like, you can ask an MR, like what are my rules and what, what's the status of them? We're just showing where the data, where and that how the data gets stored. Yeah, in Thanks. fact, so to 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 the the measure cluster, it'll essentially be exactly the same, right? You'll still be looking at the same mod model itself. It'll just be getting the variables from the the approval rules table rather than the denormalized data that's now currently stored on the approval merge request rules table. The one um, the one quirk of this is that we still need to because we still allow for MR level editing of those rules, right? Where you can go and say, well, for this, this specific MR, I need to, you know, I need eight approvals instead of seven. Um, we still need to kind of figure out how we want to handle that, those, whether we need to have like an actual table for like creative specific one-off instances or if we can do overrides or something, but that's kind of left as an exercise for implementation. That's not a highly used feature in my understanding. But this is sorry. This is when you override the project level rule in a merge request, is it? Is that what yes. You mean? When you yeah, yeah. And it will also be when you override a, a group level rule at a project. Now we're adding these. So basically, whenever you override a rule, when it's normally it'd be inherited, and then you want you want to edit it. Like, do we create a new rule, or do we add some variables to the the join table itself? So yeah, yeah. But you still you still you still maintain that connection between like mm. the the template version, if you will, the exactly. pure form, yeah. and the the shadow on the wall. So yeah, Marie, you have a question. Yeah, I have a question. I I apologize if it's if it's a trivial question. Feel free to point me towards like documentation on that. Um, do we have some sort of um, diagram that shows like how how things are like cascade or how things are overridden. Like for example, like now there's like merge request approval policies. And then we're gonna have group level approval rules and then project level approval rules. And then in the MR you can set rules too, right? Like when you open the MR. So do we have like a some sort of like diagram or something that shows like okay this like if, if you get like like if you if you add like a group level one Here's how it cascades. If you had a merge request approval policy, here's how it cascades, right? Like, uh, do, do do we have any anything like that, or can someone walk me through it so that I just understand how these are kind of linked? <laughs> I think the closest we do have a document that has some diagrams, but it's not perfect, um, and perfect. it's. Why, it's a wireframe, right? So wonderful. But yeah, e ERDs. But yeah, it gives you a kind of overview of like some of, some of the structures that are there. Um, but yeah, I think one of the first exercises we're going to need to do is to create new diagrams for the proposal and kind of look at them side by side and compare like how they stack up against each other. I feel like this would be a really good opportunity to 
use that practice, right, of writing writing the docs first, almost, um, yeah. where we, we describe what the system is going to do completely so we can understand it. And, and that'll help context, us flesh out these weird cases. Yeah, and just for context, the, the reason why I was asking is, so Michael Lee and I have been uh, discussing uh, for everything that has to do with settings and then the policies and like how, like, what are like the bet like from a user perspective like what if if a customer were to come to us and say okay i've got you know an organization we have 2000 people what are the best practices for how we should set up our projects to manage approvals and so right now we've got like code owners we've got policies we've got we're going to have like group level approval rules and so from like we're trying to look at at this and and basically look at look at it from the like you said like the documentation perspective and just be like okay what is the actual like best practice guidance we would give to that customer as to which which uh, w what should they use in GitLab to be best manage this and what will cascade down to what right and like and so so to give them like an uh, and and then one of the questions that's going to be raised, but that's outside of the scope here, but is um, how do we ensure also that once they have followed, let's say this best practice, that they can have visibility into into this before they actually create the MR, right? Like so that they they always know, like how how all they like how do you basically tell that customer, hey, you've got your two thousand employees, you want to know what to expect from when someone creates an MR. Here's the over, you know, the high level view of everything that you've got set up in your project and how it interacts. So I think like there's an opportunity here to, if if, if we get some sort of di diagram like internally, I think that's going to also help with that other initiative, right, that we're doing, which is, I think, correlated, right, which is like just making sure that we've we've got some sort of like a best practice approach to like how things cascade and how we 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 yeah we tell our customers they should set those so um so yeah and 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 so i guess like the the, the second question is because uh, uh, the the new diagrams would be great um i do have this question about the policies like do the like are the policies completely like aside from that like meaning if if i set a policy and i say hey i want two approvers let's say minimum in anything within like my instance, um, does that tie into like the group approval level approval rules that we want to like send or is that like a complete different setting that just cascades down and just basically overrides everything? I'm not sure when you refer to policies, do you know what you're actually referring to? Because I know we do have something called security policies. I'm not entirely sure how those work currently. Um, okay. But you, the idea of group level approval rules is definitely to be able to achieve what you're saying as well, right? Where you can say every MR that is for a protected branch or for any branch needs to have at least one approval or two approvals, and it needs to be from users within this group. So that's definitely something we can achieve with group level approval uh, approval rules, but it possibly is also um, security policies, but I'm not sure. I'll, I'll uh, yes, it, it has to do with security policies, but it, let, let me just uh, share the the documentation. Here. Oh, it's gonna oh, it's updated. It wasn't yet. Um, let me just share it in the chat and then I'll add it to the doc. Uh, so it used to be called um, scan result policies, and now it's called merge request approval policies. I think that's confusing. <laughs> I think that makes it seem like they're related, but they might not be directly related per se. From look from the looks of the docs. So the merge request approval policies are there to enforce project level settings and create approval rules based on scan results. So basically, I'm just wondering, like, especially since we're going to work on group level policies, this seems to be at the project level. Like, I'm just. <laughs> I apologize if I'm like I'm just a bit confused with how that 
those policies tie into the approval rule stuff that we're going to do. Yeah, to be honest, the, the 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 security policies are something that have been on my periphery for a long time that I've never really investigated. So I'm, I don't have a definitive answer for you. So. Um, but it's definitely something I, I can look into more and try and figure out you know, how these are. Related yeah, I think I think certainly rules. like <clears throat> similar to Joe, I think we've been aware of them, but I haven't actually, I, as far as I re remember, I think they get mixed in into the approval stage. Um, but I don't exactly know, like I, I need to go and investigate how they're created. Um, yeah, I, I know that we, in the back end, we're, we're working with them. Um, they're, they're sort of bolted on to the side. They're, they're treated as different category of approval rules. Um, so, but we still touch them. We, we update them and we delete them uh, using Certainly. the same uh, heuristics as we do for other rules. I think in the investigation into, you know, the re-architecture, definitely need to kind of consider where this touches those and how and what impl impact that would have for sure. Great issue to okay. raise. I think one uh, one aspect of it, and yes, we need definitely need to look into that. Is like it's the res it's the result of scanners of scanning that will cause the creation of approval rules, and the scanning, as far as I understand, happens at the project level. So I think it's fair to assume, and please verify that, at least for starters, even though they're defined at the group level, that the output of the policies will always be project level, to begin with, unless that team which I don't know who is owning this part, wants to build a way for the outcomes to be at the group level. That's a bit weird, though. You have a scan result at the project level. Why would that create a group level? Please verify this. Yes, I'm just sharing my thoughts. Thank you. I guess I'm not entirely sure if they're interacting with the scan results. Are they interacting with the approval project rule tables at the moment? I don't think that they are, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So if we change all of that architecture, you know, are they going to have to interact differently with the system as well? I just dropped a link to the Epic that added these. Um, so we can trace it back to the team and individuals later for research. Thank you. And I'm going to share this recording with, with Michael also, because I think he's going to be very interested. He's been looking at the, at just this overarching, you know, best practice uh, stuff I'm talking about. So we're going to get it together, but I think he's going to be interested in, in seeing uh, potentially, you know, if we're planning on like creating new diagrams and things like that, that's going to be, uh, really useful for what we're trying to do. Well, I guess in terms of next steps, there's quite a lot of investigation that needs to happen, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I think, well, I created, I think, Carrie, in, in, in one of your issues, you said that this really 100% should be an epic. So um, perhaps that's what we do. Perhaps we'll even promote that issue to an epic and um, or create a new one. I kind of yeah, I, I would, um, it, if it were me, I'm not telling you what you do, yeah, but yeah, if please. it were me, um, <clears throat> I'd make a new epic where the, and you only have one deliverable on it. You copy over as much as you want from the old one, right? But the the, the, the first issue is just like, you know, research and investigate what the plan is going to be. Um, and then go ahead and like build out the plan from there on the Epic. Um, but yeah, moving it to moving to Epic is going to be a lot cleaner um, long term. Okay, so I'll do that and assign myself to do some research in this milestone and then we'll see where we end up. That sound like a plan? Uh, I'm probably going to be annoying all of you with those questions, <laughs> especially you. That was going to be my next question. I was going to say, how can I, how can I support you in this? Um, um, yeah, no, hit me up for whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I like, if you don't mind, I, I, I might like schedule a call next week um, and maybe we, you and 
with Carrie and Joe, and we can really get into the weeds and kind of pull things apart a little bit over a half an hour. That's okay. That's not great. Gavin, okay. just a just a process question. Did you already have this work assigned for you, this milestone, as a deliverable? No. So what is happened it, was I was working on the group approval rules and then on the inheritance. And um, because that's now blocked, I, I have a feeling that, that that was quite a large deliverable. So what, what I might do sure. is just like pull, pull this into that deliverable uh, and then we can kind of talk about it again in the next milestone. Yeah, just to, under, just to understand whether that investigation would have an impact on other things. So if you feel like it's blowing up, blowing up well, yeah, no, I know. Yeah. I, I think I think I'm okay. Um, okay. If uh, I'll ask Sean if I'm not. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think I should be okay. But in the next milestone, maybe we'll sit down and see uh, see how to prioritize it. Okay, makes sense. I like this plan. Okay. Thanks very much. Have a good weekend. Sorry for having such a late call on a Friday. I know it's not ideal. Oh, it's an early Thanks call for moving me, in. So I'm happy. Oh. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> are you in? Are you are you in Disneyland for the weekend? Uh, today's my last day. I'm going to go and have brunch and then uh, head home. Yeah, yeah. Very have good. a great time. Enjoy week. the rest of the of your stay. <laughs> of course. Great right. Bye. Yeah. Thank have you. Appreciate day. it. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.